If you want to develop a deep level of control over the look of your images and define your own style so that you're not needing to rely on other people's presets, then this video is for you. Most photographers avoid curves or don't have a fundamental understanding of how it works, but the tonal curve is the single most powerful editing tool you can add to your arsenal. So let's quickly look at how to think about curves in a way that will give you more control over your images. And towards the end, I'll share how I personally use it to color my images and mix up unique looks for each shoot. When you look at your basic adjustments, you have highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. And then moving to the tone curve, you have other terms for what seems like the same thing, as well as your point curve adjustments. This can quickly get confusing, so let's talk about how programs like Photoshop and Lightroom are thinking of these things. So here's a photo from a real wedding I shot that was also an editorial featured in Destination Weddings magazine. This is closer to the original with some subtle brightness and contrast adjustments. And when I'm talking about tones, it's easier to explain from a grayscale image, so we'll convert this to black and white. This helps to look at our image in terms of darkest areas to brightest areas. And if we simplify, this is how Lightroom and Photoshop thinks of these tonal ranges. Bringing up curves to illustrate, you have your blacks, and these are the darkest parts of your image with the farthest point on the curve representing a pure black. You have your shadows, which are dark but have a wider range in tones than the blacks. Then you have your midtones, also called exposure. This is basically your 50% gray of your image. You have your highlights, which a lot of people actually confuse with the whites of an image, but the highlights include a broader range on the total curve and often also include Caucasian skin tones. And then finally you have your whites, which have a narrower range. And these are the brightest tones of your image, often found in reflections or areas at the very tippy tippy top of the brightness spectrum. So with that in mind, how does this apply to our image? Let's open up curves. Looking at our default curve, we're gonna have two points already placed representing our darkest blacks and our purest whites. If we wanted to lift the blacks, we could drag the black point up. And at the same time, if we wanted to crush the whites, we could bring the white point down. You're essentially telling the program that what was once white, we now want to be a gray. And what was once a pure black, we want to be a dark gray. So if we were to reset this, we could also do the same thing with our midtones lifting up from a medium gray and essentially increasing exposure. Now the true power of curves is that unlike a simple exposure adjustment, you can lock tonal areas that you wanna keep the same. For instance, you can add a point here to lock the midtones so that they don't change, and then add points to raise just the highlight areas and deepen just the shadows. This is a common contrast enhancement referred to as an S-curve, which you can see if I turn this effect on and off. Now where some people get in trouble with curves is adding too many points or too many points close together, which will impact other parts of your curve, um, making your image go a little bit wonky. So to avoid that, keep it to just a few points so that you have a nice smooth curve. So now that we've touched on that, let's head back over to Lightroom to edit our original image and also chat about how to color tone using RGB curves. In Lightroom, looking at our histogram, you can see we have the same thing, our blacks, our shadows, our exposure, which is the midtones, the highlights, and the whites. And as you can see on our histogram, the majority of the tones in this image are living right within this highlights area. With the same thing mapped out here on our curves, our blacks, shadows, mids, whites. So if we reset this by going to linear, we now have a clean curve and let's see how we can dial this in. Now typically I'll have already done a basic adjustment across the image to kind of even it out and have it looking good. Here's the quick before of the image, and as you can see, I underexposed to retain the detail in the clouds and the highlights of that trailer. And then what I'll do is bring up the image to kind of even it out, have it looking good as kind of a baseline. I have a full other video all on how I edit for this look that I'll link below in case you guys are interested. But for the fine tuning and the real look, of this image, that will all happen in tonal curves. And that's what we'll dive into now. So the most popular way of using curves is what's called an S-curve, where you're lifting the highlights and bringing down the shadows with the midpoint pretty much staying in place. But since I love a light and airy look to my images and almost a filmic look, um, I do things a little bit different. And my favorite way of using curves tends to be lifting in those midtones keeping the shadows just a little bit there, and then lifting in the blacks, which creates a little bit more of a filmic look in those shadow tones of the image. For this, I'm gonna bring that down just a little. There we go, and I think that's looking pretty good. 
So from here, I'll usually come into the color channels and we have red, green, and blue for our RGB channels. Now, when thinking about how to use curves for color toning, it's helpful to think in terms of how an image works. Every image is made up of three channels of color, red, green, and blue, that add together to create every single color in your image. But to truly understand how to control your colors and curves, it's important to visualize the color wheel and know the opposites of each color. For instance, bringing down the red channel will shift part of your image to be more cyan, green to magenta, and blue to yellow. So now that we've covered the basics of colors and curves, let's go back and see how I apply this to this image. I love more of a filmic look, so for this image, we're gonna come into the greens, click your points, we're gonna hold these in place, and kind of a cool hack when you're picking your points on the curves is to hold down Option, and this will keep it from moving since I found that Lightroom is really sensitive, and also when you're dragging up or down by holding Option, it will give you more precise controls. And then we're gonna lift just in those blacks. What this is doing is, I'm gonna go to the extreme just so you guys can see, but it's adding color into those blacks of the image those deepest tones of the image. And this creates a really pretty lifted black look where we have a bit of a green tone in the blacks. I'm then gonna come into my blue channel and do the same thing. And for this, I actually want to warm her up just a little bit. So I'm gonna add a couple control points here, and then I'm gonna bring the mid-tones down just a little bit to add a little bit of warmth to her skin. We're bringing it, pulling it towards uh, the yellow tones. And then we're gonna go up in our shadows. Just a hair. Subtlety is really good for this. Let's bring that down just a bit. So it's just getting the blacks of the image. And there we go. Here's a quick before and after. So as you can see, this is a super powerful tool and with just basic knowledge of how color works, you can start to develop your own style and really fine tune any look you want. Have fun trying these tips and crafting a look that's all your own. If you enjoyed this video, tap that little like button below to show some love and Bella and I will see you next video.